Penn State football, uh, I, I'm sorry, I keep saying they're on a recruiting roll. I need to have a new way to introduce these videos. Uh, we are specifically talking about offensive line, which is white hot right now for Penn State football. Ryan Snyder, recruiting insider, to bring us the latest commitment for the Nittany Lions. Ryan, how you doing today? And what are we doing today? Who are we talking about? Yeah, another day. Another premier offensive tackle, a true offensive tackle, which I know fans have been um, asking about feels like forever now. And, and Penn State gets another one here in Egan Boyer, 6'8", 260. And he is a true 6'8", 260. Uh, th those are verified measurements. So, um, man, you talk about length, talk about athleticism, you talk about all the things you want uh, in a soon-to-be senior and, and, and eventually in, into college and someone that you can mold into – uh, a, a college uh, offensive tackle. This is this is what you're looking for. And obviously, when they just picked up Garrett Sexton the day before, who's a legit six seven, uh, he's a little bit a uh, little bit skinnier uh, at two forty five. Right? What's two forty five? What's fifteen pounds when you're when you're up at that size and, and like? But um, you know, both are just again two guys that uh, really showed a lot from an athleticism perspective, and uh, you know ha have a lot of room to to grow and stack on muscle and and become the kind of players that that Phil Troutwine is looking for. But uh, you know Boyer's a high three star right now by on three, and and certainly someone that I know we'll we'll be looking at more and more here uh, f following this commitment. And uh, yeah, I mean Penn State pretty much I think beat out uh, Tennessee. Clemson, Auburn, they seem to be the three of the schools that were, were firmly in the mix. A uh, bunch of awesome offers, though. You know, uh, you know, Michigan offered Clemson, as I mentioned, was in there. Um, and he visited all over the place, especially this this spring, too, uh, you know, which we can get into a little bit more. But uh, it, it's it's a big commitment for Penn State. You know, their, their fourth true offensive tackle. We'll see what happens with Caleb Brewer, I think. I think the more I learn on the Brewer situation, I think Penn State really wants to play him as a defensive tackle, and and time will tell there. So for now, I'm looking at this as four true offensive linemen and potentially two more to come. It's a fascinating group of players, too. Not the not the one that I expected, you know, and I think Penn State fans, the names that we've been talking about, not necessarily the group you would have expected in, say, December when we were wrapping up 2022 or 2023, heading into 2024. Um, but Boyer, a name that was, and to that point, a little bit underrated throughout this process. So how did this relationship develop with Phil Troutwine mm -hmm. and uh, Boyer, who is from North Carolina? Penn State has been pushing, it seems like, especially for offensive linemen, a little bit farther south. A couple of guys uh, they flirted with from North Carolina down to Georgia, some of those areas over the last couple of years, and they land Boyer here. So how did that recruit process go through uh, to your understanding so far? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you go back to Sever Boyer, didn't even have an offer, right? Uh, he, yeah. he was offered by Penn State in mid-January. And, uh, you know, Troutwine, with with the way the calendar works now, you know, you have that December period, uh, of course, before the early signing period. That's when, when coaches really focus on the classes about to sign, you know, so they're doing a lot of those in-home visits and in-school visits and making sure they lock up their class. So when you get to January now, uh, obviously Penn state had pretty much their entire class done. So they spent a lot of time focusing on 2024, 2025. And, and Boyer was one of the, 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 the players that trout was able to get down to the school, learn more about, and, and eventually uh, gave him an offer in about mid January. Uh, from there, you know, obviously a lot of conversations, a lot of talks, a lot of zooms, a lot of things like that, that uh, piqued his interest. You know, I will say that his stepmother, uh, Egan told me that his stepmother went to Penn state. So that never hurts. Uh, and I, I believe that, that, you know, that relationship there kept him on campus a little bit longer. I'm not saying he wouldn't have stayed for two, three days, but I know when he came uh, at the beginning of April, you know, he was telling me that because of his stepmom's, uh, you know, history with the school, they ended up staying pretty much the entire weekend, uh, you know, which really kind of, uh, it wasn't just football, right? You know, they, they yeah. were, they were going over and exploring and, and uh, you know, show, showing him around. So, uh, you know, that that's really when it kickstarted though, man, April one comes up for that weekend and that's where it went from, okay, this is a player I need to watch. So this is a player that I think Penn State's top five with. You know, at the time I left there thinking, okay, this is a player we're going to watch for an official visit. I mean, he even told me, uh, you know, he planned to take an official visit, just has to get things scheduled. And, uh, you know, the one thing with Egan, too, is, man, he took a ton of visits this, this spring. Uh, he went to Auburn, Clemson, NC State. I'm um, looking down my list here. Where else did he go? He went to Tennessee, Michigan State, Michigan uh let's see here notre dame as well so i mean he was very active in going to see schools and i think uh as as we do see with a lot of guys who have very busy springs you know he was able to kind of 
uh, look this all over and say, hey, I know what I want to do. And then also when you add in the fact that Penn State's up to three offensive linemen now, you just add a tackle yesterday uh, that, um, you know, just I'm not going to say that's the reason he's committing right now. But, hey, uh, I think I think it's pretty clear uh, that you can't wait too long right now if you want to be a Penn State offensive lineman because the, the, the dominoes are falling quickly and you don't want to miss out on your spot. Yeah, and that's one thing we talked about on our show Monday morning was you've got so many so quickly. Does that force, or not even force, but encourage somebody to say, hey, I want to join as well? And the question posed to us on our live show was, what about quarterback? But really, this is the result of that, where you've got a guy like Egan Boyer the day after Garrett Sexton commits. You've got two guys in the class, and and this is this is really, to me, the, the first time I've seen under James Franklin a true bookends at tackle for in the same class. Now you can make an argument, Nana Sidu and uh, uh, Rashid Walker. I think it was 2018 or was it 2017 or 2018? Those two, but the never played at Penn state, both these guys not on campus either. So let's like, let's not get too ahead of ourselves, but having a guy who's six, eight and a guy who's six, seven with the length that they have two true tackles and guys that are good at football, like guys that I know we're talking about Garrett Sexton being a little bit raw. And I, and I really do want to focus on, on just Boyer here, but you can't because the, the duo of them back to back signifies a change for Penn State football on the offensive line and recruiting. Both of these guys have like top flight potential despite their ranking uh, situation. I am curious, did any insight, any idea why Egan with the size that he has and good athleticism is a three star across the board? Is there something I guess is what am I missing here? Because I'm very high on mm -hmm. on Boyer and, and his potential. Maybe his ceiling isn't as high as, as Sexton's, but also it's not low. Like he's not. I, I don't think that he is a, uh, you know, a, a guy that does, is missing anything athletically. I think it's just verified measurements. Uh, we you know we we got we got verified heights and weights for Boyer. For Sexton, we have a lot more information, and and, and I think that's the case for a lot of guys. I mean, it's April. Like I keep coming back to people about like, you know, obviously we're 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 thick into the twenty twenty four class, right? So people are really focusing on rankings, you know. But from a ranking perspective, we're only like forty percent through. Uh, there's going to be so many more updates to come. You know, you also run into the situation where you know Sean was mentioning this on the podcast. You know, a lot of Southern guys, we have that verified information because in California and Florida and, you know, down South, you know, they've been doing camp since about mid-February now, where now we're getting up North here. It's getting nicer. We're about to see, you know, Under Armour is going to be in Baltimore here in a few weeks. There's a couple others. I don't want to, I can't remember them all off the top of my head, but, but we're getting into an opportunity now where we're going to get a lot more verified numbers on a lot of the players Penn State's are after. You know, I don't know if, if Egan has gone to camps previously. It's something I need to learn a little bit more about, but just, you know, I, when I look over our database and the verified numbers that we have, we don't, we we don't really have a lot for him. We have height and weight and reach and those kind of things. But as far as well, how he moves and things like that, we don't have. And I, yeah. I, if we were able to get those, I think it would it would it would certainly help uh, his, his ranking. But again, you know, we're like I said, we're forty percent through. Uh, there, there's a lot more film to be watched, and uh, you know, obviously Charles and, and everybody there will be doing that here in the weeks and months ahead. Yeah, and, and some of the things that you see on film, I'm I'm really impressed by. Just going, we'll show you the the film here. You look at his movement skills. I think that what he screams to me is a right tackle in in modern football. That means you aren't the elite of the elite, but you still have to have exceptional foot quickness. And I think his length, his agility, his ability to play with a good base and and good pad level at six eight, all those things to me, just a tick off of what you'd have normally. I should I should back up and say. Normally, for a Penn State class, if he comes in and he's the he's the only tackle prospect, this is a left tackle prospect. But given they've got two of them, and I have my preferences here, and I have my druthers, I can say this is a starting right tackle in college football with that size, that length. I think he's got good position fundamentals. The area he needs to take a, a step forward, I do think, is his run blocking. I don't think he is as powerful as as he can be, and obviously that's the size factor of being six eight, but not being two ninety. That will come, but when it comes to a modern tackle that needs to be able to protect, needs to be able to be in space, use his length and athleticism, it's a slam dunk. Like there, there's the the potential here is much higher than than a, than a high three star to me. So I think during this process, I'm with Penn State and and Coach Phil Troutwine that he's going to go up in the rankings because I think that the 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 physical skills are there, and once he puts it all together and we get some testing times. Maybe I'll be wrong and he's not as athletic, but he's 
He's got the length. He's got the movement skills. He passes all of the tests for me when I look at him on film. So Penn State getting two really good offensive tackles in back-to-back days. Egan Boyer, 6'8", with uh, an enormous reach. I, I just can't stress this enough. This is this is really good for Penn State recruiting. To me, as much as last year was a big moment there, it was also um, a situation where you've got guys that are making a change in the way we're seeing Penn State recruit on the offensive line with these two guys. Ryan, any final thoughts here? No, I, I would just say that Penn State's incredibly high on Egan. Uh, you know, I was talking to someone yesterday about that that situation there, and so it's it's funny, like. Obviously, what's going to happen with Kevin Hayward? What's going to happen? You know, Packy Finau is a guy we're not talking about a little uh, enough, probably. Uh, Phil Tratwine was just in Washington yesterday, flew out there to see Packy Finau. Uh, he's a player who's going to, um, you know, come and, and, and visit in the spring, or excuse me, visit in, in June for an official visit. Uh, whether he's an interior or an, uh, an outside uh, tackle, I, I'm still trying to f- get a better feel for that. I, obviously, I don't have a great feel for all the uh, guys out there in Washington. But uh, I guess where I'm going with here is like they stack Boyer up with with Kevin Haywood, with Garrett mm-hmm. Sexton. I mean, he is very much in that group. Ethan Calloway is another one, uh, another North Carolina guy uh, who just announced his top eight the other day. You know, I think Penn State's in the mix for an official visit, probably top four or five. The, the one thing I'll be curious about here moving forward now is just, okay, there's four offensive linemen. Caleb Brewer's kind of a, well, yeah, could go either way. You know, how do, how do uh, recruits start looking at this, right? Like, oh, do yeah. I want to be the sixth offensive lineman in this class? Or, do, you know, can I go to another school where I'm, you know, the second, third, and, you know, they're only taking two or three guys. It just, yeah, I think a lot of, co- it, and not that, like, Schools will negatively recruit this against Penn State. They will use this yeah. to their advantage, whether it's fair or not. You know, I think if you look at Penn State's roster situation, it's very simple to see that it's it's there. They have to take guys this year. Again, they have yeah. eight guys on their roster who are fourth, fifth, sixth year and, and could potentially move on. So they, you know, they absolutely have to load up. Uh, but just again, you know, when it comes to Kevin Haywood, Callaway, Finau, you got Kai Greer out there. There's a couple others. You know, how how does having all these commitments now impact their recruitments um, moving forward? So Penn State's going to definitely get another offensive tackle. I feel like they are uh, it, have casted such a wide net and are in they're in they're in top four with like all these guys, right? Like one yeah. more guy has to fall for them. You know, I could see it being six even too, you know, if you have a sadder weight or another interior guy that you'd absolutely cannot pass up on. So I still think that there's a real chance that you see six offensive linemen in this class, and that's not including Caleb Brewer, uh, who I like I said, I, I think Pese really wants him to be a defensive lineman. Uh, time time will tell there though. So uh, great start for Penn State. You know, where uh, Penn State's up to twelve commitments now. I say great start. This has been going on for like a month now, so I don't know if it's really yeah. getting started. Um, I don't even know when it's going to end either because I feel like this is just going to roll right into June. And uh, you know, once we get to maybe we'll have a July this year, T Frank, where uh, you know there's not fifteen <laughs> commitments in July like we've seen the previous year. Oh, but, so somebody's uh, no, going to want to commit on roll. the fourth. Somebody's going to want to commit on the fourth. So it's it's not going to be grills and 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 uh, pools for everybody. We're going to have to have something because that everyone loves to commit during a celebration. I'm going to put my vacation day in now and make sure Fitz has to do that. I did back to back for July 4th commitments the last two years. Fitz, if you're watching this, you're, you're doing that this year. Uh, so we'll keep up with all that stuff. Of course, uh, if you're watching this before Friday, another uh, Penn State prospect is committing Friday with Corey uh, Smith making his decision of where he's going to go. So like Ryan said, this is not over by any means so subscribe to blue white illustrated on youtube here uh with uh, liking this video and blue white illustrated.com for more inside information get in the lion's den message form we'll have all kinds of comprehensive coverage of penn state football's class of 2024 and beyond i'm thomas frank carr he's ryan snyder we will talk to you with the next breaking news commitment